Hi, my name is Paul Parrott. I'm the son-in-law. I'm here by proxy for Nancy. What does one say about their soulmate for 57 years? What can they say about the person you believe God picked for you? The one who made your life great. At just 18 years old, I made the list of qualities I wanted in this house. First, I wanted a man who wanted to honor God with his life. Ed did do this. He prayed repeatedly for people in the world at large. He read the Bible over nine times over. He rarely missed Sunday service. He wanted to do right by God with his life. After losing his license, he garnered the rights to church from others. As the Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases further increased his mind and body, he was unable to complete this ritualistic morning routine on time, which included reading three chapters of the Bible. So, unfortunately, by the time he completed his morning routine, the minister was already at home eating lunch. <laughs> his mind wasn't strong enough to know the concept of time anymore, so I took him to church site on Sunday. We left the house and church was starting, 20 minutes away. Later, when I asked Ed if he enjoyed the service, he replied, I don't like the way they're doing the service. They started with the sermon. <laughs> valued being with the community of believers, and he attended church as long as he was physically able to do so, which was long after it made sense to him. I admire his dedication. Second, I wanted a man who was strong-willed, who could handle my strong will. Everyone who knows Ed knows that he fits this criteria. Yes, we went head to head sometimes, but it never lingered. Everybody needs someone like that, someone who can handle their anger and not hold it against them, always hoping for unity and peace. I love to dance, so, of course, I wanted a man who could also dance. Our game consisted of water skiing during the day and dancing at night. He taught me the cha-cha with the words, Every girl I taught to dance got married. He was right again. <laughs> Our senior years were spent dancing at the arts club and at the beach, and always ended with the big fish who the mummers to strut. We ended our marriage the way we began, dancing. Fourth, I participated in the sports throughout school and thought an athlete would be a solid match for me. I even considered being a coach's wife and thought I was invited. I was right. It suited me. I loved it. All of it. The kids, the parents, the coaches, the tournaments. I learned the sport and learned it well. I knew his team members, their strengths and weaknesses. I became friends with their parents. I loved Ed's wrestling world. Refereeing, on the other hand, not so much. I can't share much, but there were words exchanged in the bleachers. Words. <laughs> Suffice it to say, not who I am so, that you can't be more than one parent on the rules of the game. That offered me things I hadn't considered I needed at my young age when considering spouse. First was communication. He was a good communicator. I always thought that the secret to our success was our ability to communicate anything to each other. We had no difficulty expressing our feelings and thoughts with each other, and we did so with vigor. More important was our ability to hear and value what the other person was saying. He believed in me more than I believed in myself. He encouraged me to reach for degrees and licenses for which I did not see myself succeeding. Master, master's of Ed, real estate license, school board vice president. Turns out, he was my coach too. <coughs> Third, he was a craftsman. And when, after I sweated for days, so I had to make my small kitchen work, he called and said, what? No problem. I'll just move the wall. You can do that? And then I proceeded to ask him to move five more walls in my house. <laughs> Fourth, he took care of the people tirelessly. Our mothers, our children, his friends, weekly errands for all, groceries and medicine, fixing their homes, every floor. Sometimes every room was touched or fixed. He even bounced out of the house mid football game to fix a friend's home. He tirelessly helped. It gave him joy. As for me, I am saying goodbye to my closest friend today, a friend with whom I shared 57 years of triumphs and tragedies, tears and laughter, joys and sorrows. We were given the gift of three wonderful children and seven terrific grandchildren. God blessed us in so many ways. I will miss him so much, but my heart was full of many, many wonderful memories. This last step of our journey has been a challenge. We could not have made it without our family, friends, and our faith. I thank each and every one of you for caring. I'm working out how to do a solo mission from this one forward. It will not be easy, but I will do it to make my head proud. Goodbye, Dave, and we'll meet again.